Right, who remembers Galatians chapter 2, verse 20? Now remember, we sang a little song, huh? You mean to start it for you? Lawson, you ready? Avery, you ready? I am... I am crucified with, God. with Christ. Okay. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, we that was in Brother for his sermon this morning. Let's see here. We come from one meeting straight out here. It's, here you go. Ready? Y'all, y'all can look at that together. I am... Um, Crucified, say it, with, with Christ. Yeah, and live within me, and what? Help him out, Brian, he's struggling reading. And the life. Okay, so what does that verse mean? That is Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, or number 872 in our song book. They took a song, they made a song out of that verse. What does that mean? Who lives now? Who's still alive? Who did they, they crucified and buried? Who was that? Jesus. Is he still alive? Yeah, so how do we know that? What's that? He, he was raised from the dead. And did was he raised from the dead to never be seen again? No. Who, who all saw him? The apostles. Who else? Okay. People. People. 1 Corinthians 15 tells us that it was up to 500 people at one time. So he appeared before a crowd of people. And they said, in 1 Corinthians 15, said, Some are still with us. You could go ask them yourselves, is what he's getting at. Paul's getting at, you can go ask these people for yourselves. So Christ, is he dead or alive? He's alive. And this verse says that we have crucified ourselves, our old man. It is no longer I who live, but who? Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live. In the flesh. How do you live it? By what? By faith. And who? In the Son of God, who who did what for us? Who the last the last line? Who what for us? Who and gave Himself for me. Very good. So, what? Do, who do we now live for? Do we live for our old way of thinking and living that's full of sin and disrespect and malice and anger and hatred? Do we live for that person anymore? No, no, we don't live for that one anymore. We live for who? We live for God. we live for God. So we don't. We no longer live like the old man. We live like the God. yeah. We call it not the old man, but the new man. That's right. And God. 
Hey, God, we live for God. Who kind of laid out how, what the new man should look like, shouldn't he? So God is the new man. Well, God is always the same man, but he created us to be a... What is it? Created us to be a what? New, new man. Sometimes we call it a new creature, a new creation in Christ. So there's a lot that's going on right there in one little verse, isn't it? And when we think of the Bible, how many books are in it? How many books are in the whole Bible? 66. Now, how many chapters are in the whole Bible? Ooh. Huh? A lot. How many? You think it's a hundred? No. You think it's more than that? One hundred thousand. I think he overshot a little bit, but I like the way where you're going. A billion. Uh, he went too high with a hundred thousand. You're still going higher, so I said a thousand. A hundred thousand was too many, so we need to go this way. A thousand. A little bit more. One thousand. One hundred. And eighty-eight. One thousand. One. One thousand. 188, 1188, that's the number. That's how many chapters are in the Bible. Now, how many verses are in there? Maybe, I don't know, I didn't, look, I didn't think about that. I didn't know we were going to get that far into this. So when we find this much information in one verse, and we think there's 66 books, and there's 1,188 chapters... And there, how many verses are in all that? It's a lot, isn't it? It's a whole lot. So how much is there for us to learn in the Bible? Is it a little bit? No, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a hundred thousand million things, isn't it? For us to know and for us to learn. It's more than my head. That wouldn't take very much. It's a whole lot in there. So if we study a verse every day, and we try to get that full meaning. It would take a long time for us to learn that, wouldn't it? Yeah, because it's going to take 100,000 weeks. 100,000 weeks, yeah. So th we have to really sit down, and, sit down and study those things in order to learn them. Okay, and we have to, we call it, if we read our Bible, what? And what every day? And Pray every day, then we'll what? Grow. All right, y'all ready? You're gonna, you're gonna, you gonna do that song with us? Read our Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read our Bible, pray every day, and we'll grow, 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 and we'll grow, 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 and I'll grow, grow, grow. grow. Well, it's okay. You memorized it while you were reading it, didn't you? I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life that I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. They're really fast? I gotta get my breathing right. We did it fair. We did it really fast one time for George, okay? You gotta sing though. You promise? Okay. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life that I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Any faster you have to be Ken Garner or Mickey Fowler. Can we get Mr. 
Yeah, no, uh-uh. Yeah, no, we'll, no, we'll, we'll do it next. We'll do it next time. All right. Yeah. Let's sing one last. Let's sing Jesus loves me. Are you ready? I want to hear y'all real loud. Y'all hadn't been singing very much Fast. tonight. No, we'll just sing it normal. I just want you to sing it loud. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Let's pray. Thank for this day. Thank for this food. Please help the people in the hospital get better. Please help the people that can't hear get better. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good evening. We welcome all of you to our worship services at Ephesus Church of Christ this evening. To those of you who have joined us online, we welcome you as well. Our first song this evening will be number two. Number two. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
time, we'll go to God in prayer, and I'd like to ask Brother Eric Woodfin to lead us in that prayer at this time. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to Thee for this beautiful day that You've given us to come together to worship Thee, and we are thankful, Father, for the services that we've had to, to assemble to worship this, this day, and we pray, Father, that our worship has been uplifting to us and we pray father most most of all that your name has been glorified above all other names by the, the things we've done here today we're thankful thee father for blessing us so richly with the things that we need in this life for food or shelter or clothing and all the other things that we need from day to day to live father we recognize the abundance that you bless us with and we pray father that you'd help us to always use those things to your glory to uh, be good stewards of what you give us and to bless others with the things that we have um, with, that we're given in this life but father we are thankful to thee most of all for the spiritual blessings that you give us through jesus jesus christ for the his the, for the blessings of his life that transcends this temporal life on this earth father the blessings of eternal salvation through his blood if it, if if, we're, if we are but faithful to Thee. We're thankful, Thee, Father, for the great love You showed to us in sending Him to this earth to live among men, to experience what it's like to live as a man, and yet to do that without sin, to become ultimately become the perfect sacrifice for on our behalf for all of our sins and for the sins of, of, of all mankind. Father, we're... We, we're thankful thee for the church that he purchased with that blood and we pray father that you be with us as we strive to be a part of that church to serve thee in the way that will be right in your sight father we're thankful to thee for this group of christians that have met here for several decades for this church so we pray father that you would continue to bless us help us to always know what to do to to best serve thee the way that you would have us to worship and serve thee Father, we pray for our leadership and our elders. We pray, Father, that you would continue to give them the wisdom to guide us and lead us in the way that's right. Father, we're thankful to thee for others that, that serve the church here in, in different capacities. And uh, Father, we're thankful to thee we have men that can preach from the pulpit. And we pray, uh, we're thankful to thee for Brother Robert, Brother Matt. Pray that you be with Brother Matt tonight as he brings the lesson to us. We pray that you'd give him a uh, a recall of the things that he's planned to present and he can print it, present it in the way that he intends such that we can learn and be better Christians in the future by hearing the words that are uh, going to be said tonight. Father, we're thankful to thee for allowing us to live in such a land where we have the freedom to assemble as we are tonight. We pray for other Christians in other areas of the world that may be war-torn or maybe have oppressive governments that don't support their right to worship thee father we just pray that you would bless them and their efforts as they strive to uh, carry on their faith and and serve thee in, in the face of threat here uh, in, in their in their homelands and their countries father we pray for those of our number that are sick at this time we pray you would bless them and bless the doctors and nurses that uh, administer to them father we just pray if it be your will their health could be restored Father, we pray for those that are grieving the loss of loved ones, that your comfort would be on them as well. Father, we recognize that we are sinful. We often do, do and say things we shouldn't do, and we leave undone things we should. Father, we pray that you would forgive us of those things. Help us to put away the things that hinder us so that we might better serve thee and be pleasing in your sight. Father, most of all, we pray at the end of this life that if we've been proven to be faithful, that you would... Receive us into heaven, not, on our, not our own, on our own deeds, but on the salvation through Jesus' blood that you've promised us. All, this thing, all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Number 859. 859. Let's sing. He paid a debt he did not owe. Yeah. 
motion will be number 544. 544. <coughs> Let's see. Reading how I love to proclaim it. Reading by the blood of the Lamb. Reading for this incumbent mercy. will be number 337, 337. Well, good evening. We are glad that you're here and uh, hope that you have your Bible with you. You can turn to Colossians chapter 3. We'll be looking at that in just a moment. Colossians chapter 3. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, Brother Robert's sermon this morning and this one, uh, as they do from time to time, they'll go along with each other, I think, as far as a general idea and topic uh, really well. Uh, he always makes me nervous if I'm on Sunday night and he starts, you know, verse after verse after verse, and that's like, well, so much for that idea. But we, we hit it from, uh, from different angles, and, and the main focus from him this morning uh, being baptism, and we're going to look at kind of some things that, bab one of the things that baptism does with us in uh, a way of things, but uh, you, you'll see where we're going in just a moment. We, we at the beginning of the school year, we have uh, uh, a lot of things as parents for children, and maybe if you... You had children before, and they've grown up and gone, or maybe we've all been a child before. Uh, and depending on where you were with siblings, uh, a lot of things were different for you as far as getting ready for the upcoming school year and the clothes that you would wear. Everyone was back to school shopping. You know, uh, I was the only. We we was just me, my sister and I. We had uh, one boy, one girl. So, you know, when it was time for me to get new clothes, I mean, no, normally I got something that at least at a very minimum was new to me it, because it wasn't wore by any of my other siblings. Uh, if you're a younger son, let's say, for instance, like Lawson, all of his new clothes are new to him clothes and that Levi has got them broke in for him because he gets hand-me-downs. Uh, my, my granddad would talk about their family. They had nine, he had nine brothers and sisters. My grandmother had eight brothers and sisters. And they would talk about how things would get passed down to the last one. And the baby just pretty much was, you know, it was just barely holding together. And it had been sewn together so many times by the time it got to them that none of the thread was the same color. None of the stitching was the same. Somebody else did the stitching from child to child to child. Uh, and, and so, you know, we have kind of the same situation. Our youngest, you know, by the time it gets to her, I, all I know is how much we saved. I don't have a clue how much we spent on it. I just get told how much we saved on all these clothes. 
Uh, but this idea of hand-me-downs is something that we're all familiar with in some shape, form, or fashion. We're used to this idea of hand-me-down. Well, okay, I'm so glad that so-and-so has outgrown this because I really like this dress or I really like this outfit, so I want to get it. And, and so it's our opportunity to get these hand-me-down clothes. We're familiar with hand-me-downs. For us to understand as Christians, Christ himself adorned and clothed himself in a certain way. He wore certain characteristics. He wore certain attributes that he has handed down to us as Christians, as like-minded children of the Father, for us to also wear. We are, if you will, we're going to put on hand-me-down clothes because we get to watch Christ wear these things and adorn himself in these things and in a certain way and in a certain fashion that we, getting to look after his example, then get to put on those same things ourselves. So we're going to look at things, uh, if you will, through this scope of hand-me-down clothes and then put things into perspective for us and the things that we are to wear. Mentioned this morning was Colossians chapter 3, and in verse 12 he says to put on them. The message uh, version of the Bible, the translation, says this, dress in the wardrobe that God picked out for you. That's literally how it's laid out in the message. Dress in the wardrobe that God picked out for you. So back to our text, put on then these things as children of God, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has complained against the other, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms, with thankfulness in the hearts to God, and whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So when we think about what we are to put on and what we are to wear as God's chosen ones, we can look at these words and we can look at their meaning and we think about Jesus. Was He all of these things? Did He have a compassionate heart? Did he, was He full of... Uh, humility and meekness and patience and kindness and bear, did he bear with one another? Was he long-suffering toward his disciples and toward the people? Was he forgiving? Yes, he was all of those things. The peace of Christ, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Did Christ have peace? Yes, he had peace. Even during trying and agonizing moments and times and times of endearment that he had to go through he had peace because he was at one with the Father. And that is the greatest peace of all. We think about his word and how it dwells in us. How we are to long after his word and what it gives us and what we are to ask for and the wisdom. And then we sing songs encouraging one another knowing that everything that we should do should be authorized by Jesus and everything that we do should be done in his name we think about the things that we're to put on we see what Christ put on are we not to put on the same the old saying is the clothes make the man and where this comes from is kind of a, a term that if we're not careful it can easily be misused to impact our modest apparel, but it's the idea of dress to impress. If we're going to have the clothes make the man, we can dress in such a way it gears our mind for the task at hand. If I were to go out and go to the farm and begin to fence and what I have on right now, I'm not going to be very effective. Because I'm going to be worried death about getting too dirty and getting too dingy and tearing something. And it's one thing to tear this hole in my shirt, but I would get a new one ripped in me when I got home. You know what I mean? All the guys do. 
I'm a little ineffective. Now, if I'm able to slide on my liberties, me and Joe probably get some work done. I'm, I'm ready to get something accomplished as far as physical activity. But if I got up here, you know, many times, if I get up on Sunday morning and I've got on a white greasy shirt underneath my liberties, they're going, everyone's thinking, what's he about to say? What is this hick doing? What is he, what's about to come out of his mouth? And they're intrigued, not from the circumstance of let's look at the word, but rather they're intrigued by the fact of what's going to happen next. So when we think about the what we wear, it does impact and it does impress not only those that are around us, but it also impact our mindset to go about doing things. But many times with our hand-me-downs, hearing things in our house, well, it doesn't fit. It's not right. It doesn't fit. It's not my style. I don't like wearing that. I don't wear that. He likes that, but I don't want to wear that. She had that, but I don't want to wear what she had on. I don't like this. This isn't what I this isn't me. It's not the right color. I don't like this color. Blue is your favorite color. Not this blue. I don't like this blue. It's not right for my personality. People will laugh at me for wearing this. And, and if you think about the spanning of children over the course of a decade or two decades, and we think about our fashion changes over the last two decades, what people wore 20 years ago isn't what they're wearing now. Now things do come around and they go around and things come back in style that were in style at one time. But it's normally not 20 years old. It's normally would go back to 40 or 50 years so that we can get that classic, cool term, vintage. I want that vintage look. When we think about Christ, and many people see the lifestyle of a Christian, and they go, well, it doesn't fit. It's not my style. It doesn't, it's not the right color. This isn't the way that I want to be seen. People are going to laugh at me because I'm a Christian. Or maybe they think about this right here as they do many times when they go to the rack at the store and they, and they survey what's there. They're looking for something on sale because when they look at being a Christian, they think, well, the price is just too high. The cost is too high. But when we examine being a Christian, we have to understand that, yeah, what we adorn ourselves, what people see with us with compassionate hearts and patience and, and peace and long suffering, all of that is going on on the outside. It's based on the faith that we have inside. And by doing some of those things outwardly, it can increase our faith. It will strengthen our faith. It will help us when we see the good in the things that are being accomplished through the will of God. Our, our strength is encouraged when we are able to take care of something or accomplish something for the Lord, when we do something in word or deed in the name of the Lord Jesus, and we're able to accomplish that task. People get to see what got done, but boy, doesn't it just make you feel good? And understanding that that change that happens inside of us is a lot of times because we have tried to replicate and imitate Christ. And we have put those things on. See, hand me down some Christ. When we see these things, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, forgiving, peace, all of those things which are found in those three verses. And we are able to effectively do them. We begin to clothe ourselves like Christ did. Christ, as Jesus born in Bethlehem in a manger, we think of his lowly beginnings. He didn't get hand-me-downs from within his you know, immediate family, so to speak. He was the firstborn. Normally, the firstborn, that's the one that's kind of getting the new clothes or the newest clothes. And they get passed down to brother to brother, as the case may be. But Jesus was one because of his lowly birth and, and coming into this world, most likely was familiar with the idea of hand-me-downs. 
And, and as we get to see him embrace all of these things in a physical nature of being clothed, we get to see in a spiritual nature the things that he clothed himself in. All of those things mentioned in Colossians 3, verses 12 through 14. If we wanted to go to Ephesians, we could look at, look at all the different fruits of the Spirit. When we think about all of these things that were put on, this should change not only the way we appear to others, but also the inside and the heart of the man. Because the clothes make the man. Romans chapter 13 and verse 14 tells us, And put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. We are looking for the correct character traits that we should be adorned with, that we should wear. We clothe ourselves with the same things that Jesus wore, then we put on G the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're not worried about the flesh because that has now become our mentality, our mindset, and now we are not only dressing the part, but we're also living the part. And we should always seek to gratify His desires and not the desires of the flesh. Well, many times when it comes to the clothes that we wear, people will ask, where did you get that at? I like that. I like that shirt. Where did you get that coat? I like that dress. Where, where did you find that? Well, when we think about these clothes that we're putting on, it, it, they don't come from Bennett's. They don't come from Kings and Sons. You can't get them at a five and dime. They're not found at those places when you can go shopping. They're not at Fred's. They can only be found in one place. Which thrift store do you shop at to find these hand-me-downs? You know, some thrift stores and Goodwills are better than others as far as the quality of stuff they got. You can really sneak in there and find some good deals. But where can we get the clothes to wear as Christ? Now, they don't come from a thrift store. They weren't bought with a cheap price. For you know that it was, that it was not with perishable things such as silver and gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. You know, this is one of the most expensive stores to ever shop. To clothe yourself like Christ is the most expensive thing that could ever be purchased. But it's free to you. It's kind of like having a shopping spree. Somebody else has already paid for it. It's the most expensive thing you could ever get, but someone else has already paid for it. We went, when Haley and I went to New York a few years ago, a couple of years ago, we, we, of course, we went in all these places that we didn't fit in, and we go in this place called Tiffany's. And uh, that, that, that's, a different, that's a different place. And... Uh, uh, it was about time we were getting ready for baby showers for some of the couples here at church. I said, well, there's a teddy bear. Why don't we just get that teddy bear from Tiffany's in New York? And we'll, we'll give them that as a, as a gift. That would be something unique and special, you know. That teddy bear was $600. $600. And I said, I guess they're going to get one from the Dollar Tree. You know, that's... <laughs> when we think about us and wearing compassion and long-suffering and peace, and we think about our, our Savior who said, yeah, it's expensive, but I've got it. I've already paid for it. It's taken care of. You see, it was not something that could be bought with gold or silver or any other perishable thing. And it's so interesting that that word perishable comes with gold and silver. Because what does everyone who sells gold and silver tell you? This is the investment that will last forever. Gold and silver does not fade away. It does not go away. The price continues to go up. It is the way to outpace inflation. And then Peter says, hey, look, gold and silver, it's going to be done away with. It's perishable. 
you were bought, you were purchased with something that sustains and surpasses gold and silver. It was with the blood of Christ. A lamb without blemish or defect. And then back to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 27. Now that we find the store that we need to shop at, how do we get the clothes? Well, it's like this. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Well, you found the store to shop at. You found out that the price has been paid for you to shop there. And now you get to put on these clothes. How do you get to put them on? Well, you put them on. And here's the thing. Every one of them is custom made. Every one of them fits you. It's not for only certain types of people. It's not for only certain body types. It's not for only male. It's not for only female. It's not for only ethnic groups or non-ethnic groups or whatever country or place of origin you may be in. If you put on Christ, through baptism, you are in Christ. And when we think about wearing Him and clothing ourselves with Him through baptism, when you go down in that water... You think about this, if you fall down in a box, or let's just say a coffin, since we're talking about the old man being buried, let's use a coffin. You go down in a coffin, there is air space around you, is it not? not? Not that necessarily you needed air when you were put in the coffin, but I mean, if you just think about that air space around you, they make this coffin, you know, pretty much for everybody. But it doesn't necessarily fit you directly. When you're baptized, when you're buried in that watery grave, is there any air pockets around you? That water envelops you entirely and covers you completely. And so as you are baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ perfectly to you as a custom-made garment, even though it was something that was handed down to you from someone else. So what are we going to wear? Now that was something that many people have worried about. And Jesus you know, attacked that in Matthew chapter 6. And Some are anxious about clothing. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Solomon can afford the finest of fine clothes. Solomon could own Tiffany's and, and somebody could take all them $600 bears and it would make no impact on his life. He was the richest of the rich. No greater, if we would, considering the place and the time and where he was. There, all, we think about all this great sheik out there in the Middle East somewhere and how, how he's some king of some province. This, that was Solomon. There's nothing that he can't buy. And it says that all of these lilies of the field, they don't worry about clothes. And even Solomon and everything that he could buy and everything that he could have made, he is not adorned like them. He is not as beautiful as they are. He is not as clothed as they are. So you, as a person, shouldn't worry about that. Because Solomon couldn't afford to look that good as the lilies of the field that God has clothed. So, since that is the case, don't worry about your clothes, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So where does that get us? Worried about hand-me-downs or first-time things or how we dress and what we should be focused on as long as we're clothed with Christ. In a world filled with fashion and style, are we more focused on appearance than putting on Christ? If we desire to remain as He lives, we should clothe ourselves in Him. Not with cotton or wool or linen or silk or any other kind of thing you can think of. Synthetic, natural, or otherwise. We should desire to remain in Him. See, Ephesians 6 tells us what we should be wearing. It tells us what we ought to wear. Put on the whole armor of God. And then in verse 14 it says, Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, 
having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having your shoe, have, and as for shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the, field, the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We think about everything we're to put on to prepare us for the battlefield of the world where Satan rules and where Satan's armies are out every day in the flesh trying to convince us that the desires of the flesh are more appealing and more fun than the satisfaction and the peace of Christ that is found in the Father. We've got to put ourselves on. We've got to get our stuff on and be ready. And we should wear this because He wore it first. Back in Isaiah 59 verse 15, it says, The Lord saw it and it displeased Him that there was no justice. And continuing in the same passage in verse 17, He says, he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing and wrapped himself in zeal as a cloak according to their deeds so he will repay wrath of his, of his adversaries, repayment to his enemies, to the coastlands. He will render payment. We think about him. It wasn't just something that he said, hey, this would be good for you to do, or this is what I'm telling you you need to put on, or I'm telling you you need to act in this way. When we, when we go through Galatians 5 and we're able to read about the fruits of the Spirit and all of those things, the fruit of the Spirit is evident with Christ in the flesh. And when we set out to live that way, and we, we adorn ourselves and we wear what He wore, regardless of what the hand-me-downs are, we understand and we're able to see not only did He wear it, He wore it better, yes, but I strive to be like Him every day. See, some garments get old. And we talked about all the things, all the different patches we would have on jeans and the, the holes that would be there and the fabric wasn't the same because they couldn't make it. Our, our garments may wear out. And honestly, they go into. But Christ remains forever. The statutes of the Lord will endure no matter what may happen. No matter what we may come across, no matter where we may be, the statutes of the Lord will endure forever. And we should be grateful that He has given us so much in this life to help us be who we were created to be. One last thing from Hebrews chapter 1. You, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like a robe, you will roll them up. Like a garment, they will be changed. The heavens and the foundation of the earth. But you are the same. And your years will have no end. Now, I don't know where you are. I don't know if you've been a modern fashionista and you've been trying to keep up with the, the latest trends and all of the great magazines and, and looking like whatever's new and hot and on the red carpet. Uh, I, I don't know about any of that, but I can tell you this, all that's going to pass away. The heavens, the earth, all of this that we see, that we even think, you know, this will be forever. That's all going to pass away, pass away, but He will remain forever. Or are you clothed with Christ? The timeless classic that never goes out of style, that never ceases to remain, that will always be there. Do you have hand-me-downs from Jesus? Or are you busy getting the new thing from the world? You know, finding everything through our Savior who gave His precious blood. That is not something that is not perishable. That does not pass away. His blood endures forever. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. 
What have you put on? If you're subject to the Lord's invitation to put something on, to put Christ on tonight, we'd love to help you as we stand and as we say. take the Lord's Supper this evening. If you'll raise your hand, I'll be glad to serve you at this time. Let us bow. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your great love that you showed to us, that you sent your only Son to come to this earth and give himself as a sacrifice for our sins. We thank you, Father, for this bread that represents Jesus' body, which he offered on the cross for us. We pray that you'll be with the one partaking this evening. They'll examine themselves and partake of it in a way to be pleasing to you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's bow again as we offer thanks for the cup. Heavenly Father, we continue our thanks to Thee for the great sacrifice of Jesus, Your Son, and for the shedding of His blood, Father, that was shed for our sins. We thank You, Father, for this fruit of the vine, which so fitly represents that blood that was shed for us. We pray that You'll be with the one partaking this evening, that they'll examine themselves and partake of it in a way to be pleasing to You. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Again, we appreciate your presence this evening. Uh, let's all try to be back Wednesday evening at 7 for our midweek Bible study. Closing song will be number 170. Number 170 will sing the first verse only, at which Brother Robert Fudge will lead us in our closing prayer. Let us stand, please. God be with you till we meet again.
Our Father in heaven, we're thankful that we have this opportunity to come together and to worship you and study from your word. We pray, Father, that each of us will strive to be clothed with Christ every day, that we can demonstrate Jesus to other people and be attractive to the world around us by being different and by being what you want us to be. We're mindful, Father, of those who are sick, those that are having treatments, those that are having tests, and those that are just trying to endure bad health. And we pray that you'll be with each one and give them your peace and your comfort and give them your healing if it's your will. We pray, Father, that you will help each of us to just be what you want us to be. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good job, Sammy. 